Hello, I'm Ron Strickland. This webcast is one of a series in which I'm providing some brief lectures and commentaries on topics from the courses I teach in literary and cultural studies. Here I'll say some things about Frankfurt School critical theory and about the importance of the Frankfurt School for academic cultural studies in the last part of the 20th century. I'll focus especially on two landmark essays, Walter Benjamin's The Work of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction and Max Horkheimer's and Theodore Adorno's essay, The Culture Industry, Enlightenment as Mass Deception. Frankfurt School critical theory emerged at an historical moment in which Marx's predictions about the inevitable downfall of capitalism and the bourgeois state seemed to have been proven wrong. Entrepreneurial capitalism had been replaced by monopoly capitalism, as Marx had predicted, but this development did not seem to be provoking the revolutions that Marx had anticipated. Faced with this historical situation, in which the capitalist system seemed to be neutralizing the contradictory economic and political pressures that should have provoked revolutionary struggle, the Frankfurt School intellectuals explored the cultural and ideological structures that had been more or less neglected by Marx himself. A concise definition of the Frankfurt School project can be inferred from the opening paragraphs of Walter Benjamin's famous essay, The Work of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction. Benjamin refers to the efforts of other social theorists to determine what art should look like in a classless society. Instead, his project will be to analyze how art and culture and ideology are functioning in late capitalism. Benjamin projects a set of materialist theses about the relationships among art, the political, and the economic mode of production. Benjamin recognizes that fascism succeeds partly by aestheticizing the political. He writes, It would therefore be wrong to underestimate the value of such theses as a weapon. They brush aside a number of outmoded concepts, such as creativity and genius, eternal value and mystery, concepts whose uncontrolled, and at present almost uncontrollable, application would lead to a processing of data in the fascist sense. Minyamin begins from the recognition that what we call art in modernity has its origins in religious ritual in pre-modern societies. Art only becomes separated from ritual practice when it becomes possible to reproduce the work of art on a mass scale. With the invention of the printing press, then offset lithography, the photograph, the phonograph, and film. In early modernity, the work of art retains an aura, which is a residual effect of the work of art's association with ritual practices in pre-modern societies. And this aura is sustained and reproduced in the concepts of original genius and authenticity that the work of art retains in late modernity. The mysterious quality of the work of art as commodity involves the substitution of a transcendent valorization of human creativity for the divine power represented by a religious fetish in a pre-modern society. With the advance of technology in mechanical reproduction, two things happen. First, the printing press, the lithograph, and the photograph made it possible to document the events of everyday life in a way that only very rare events had been represented in the past. Second, the rare and authentic work of creative genius was rendered ordinary and common by the possibility of endless, almost infinite reproduction. The reproduction of an original work of art always diminishes the aura of the work. Benjamin writes, one might generalize by saying the technique of reproduction detaches the reproduced object from the domain of tradition. By making many reproductions, it substitutes a plurality of copies for a unique existence. And in permitting the reproduction to meet the beholder or listener in his own particular situation, it reactivates the object reproduced. 
These two processes lead to a tremendous shattering of tradition, which is the obverse of the contemporary crisis and renewal of mankind. Both processes are intimately connected with the contemporary mass movements. Their most powerful agent is the film. Its social significance, particularly in its most positive form, is inconceivable without its destructive, cathartic aspect, that is, the liquidation of the traditional value of the cultural heritage. This function of the work of art of liquidating the traditional value of the cultural heritage might seem to have a positive revolutionary potential. But from Benjamin's perspective, it went hand in hand with the rise of fascism. Benjamin describes the replacement of art's ritual function with a political function as follows. All efforts to render politics aesthetic culminate in one thing, war. War and war only can set a goal for mass movements on the largest scale while respecting the traditional property system. It goes without saying that the fascist apotheosis of war does not employ such arguments. Fiat ars periat mundus, says fascism, and as Marinetti admits, expects war to supply the artistic gratification of a sense perception that has been changed by technology. This is evidently the consummation of l'art pour l'art. Mankind, which in Homer's time was an object of contemplation for the Olympian gods, now is one for itself. Its self-alienation has reached such a degree that it can experience its own destruction as an aesthetic pleasure of the first order. This is the situation of politics which fascism is rendering aesthetic. Communism responds by politicizing art. Though Benjamin wrote this essay in the 1930s, his argument had perhaps its greatest influence in American universities in the 1970s and 1980s. Throughout most of the 20th century, American literary studies had been dominated by formalist new criticism, which rejected any connection between art and politics, and argued instead that all truly great art transcends its immediate political and historical context. The theory and cultural studies revolutions of the 1980s brought politics and history back into the study of literature. There was a shift away from formalist close readings of literary text toward ideology critique on the model developed by Horkheimer and Adorno in The Culture Industry. For Horkheimer and Adorno, the emergence of the mass culture industry represents a decline from the possibility of avant-garde art as social critique under the conditions of monopoly capitalism what passes for art seems to them to function mainly as mass indoctrination. I'll conclude this webcast with a couple of examples that exemplify ideology critique from the culture industry essay. The purity of bourgeois art, which hypostasized itself as a world of freedom in contrast to what was happening in the material world, was from the beginning bought with the exclusion of the lower classes with whose cause the real universality. Art keeps faith precisely by its freedom from the ends of the false universality. Serious art has been withheld from those for whom the hardship and oppression of life make a mockery of seriousness, and who must be glad if they can use time not spent at the production line just to keep going. Light art has been the shadow of autonomous art. It is the social bad conscience of serious art. Amusement under late capitalism is the prolongation of work. It is sought after as an escape from the mechanized work process and to recruit strength in order to be able to cope with it again. But at the same time, mechanization has such power over a man's leisure and happiness and so profoundly determines the manufacture of amusement goods that his experiences are inevitably after images of the work process itself. As these excerpts illustrate, Horkheimer and Adorno hold on to a conception of the autonomy of the work of art that can seem rather elitist by postmodern standards. But their critique of the indoctrination effects of the mass culture industry remains as powerful today as it was when they wrote it. With that, I'll conclude this webcast. But, as always, if you have questions or comments as you're reading about and thinking about these topics, send me an email.